नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस न्यू पॉडकास्ट चैनल इट्स अ वीडियो पॉडकास्ट पिक्सल नैरेटिव विथ अनुतोष दि शो टेक्स ऑन द व्यूअर्स ऑन अ कैप्टिवेटिंग जर्नी थ्रू द रिल्स ऑफ आर्ट म्यूजिक एंड फोटोग्राफी द डिस्कशन इन दिस पॉडकास्ट एक्सप्लोर ए वराइटी ऑफ टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू क्रिएटिविटी कंपोजिशन and inspirational real life stories with our esteemed guests and experts in the few respective fields every episode of pixel narratives features engaging talks and insightful interviews offering listeners a glimpse into the minds of this talented individual today we have with us a very fantastic photographer who keeps on moving around jungle to jungle photographing not lions and tigers but photographing the flying jewel have with us rohit girotra from bengaluru welcome to our show rohit thank you dada and uh, how have you come to guwahati well um, i have been to guwahati multiple times okay uh, this is my uh, second third trip actually uh uh-huh. and this time around i have come along with uh, ashok da and uh, the objective uh, has been to uh, visit several places in assam bhutan meghalaya to photograph various forms of wildlife and especially butterflies that we find in these areas okay so that's been the primary purpose and of course i will not miss the opportunity to visit uh, ma kamakhya temple while i am in guwahati okay so you have been here for couple of times yes and uh, this time uh, it is a pleasure to host him in the studios of afta uh, rohit uh, as i can see that you have been photographing butterflies and dragonflies insects right but then in most of the cases we find wildlife photographers hunting with their cameras taking photographs of the great greater known animals you know a rhino a leopard a tiger but then here we have a photographer with us who is very keen observer of the wonderful butterflies the flying jewels all over the country moving around in different places different locations photographing this wonderful flying jewels which we often miss to see in our day to day life So, Rohit, my question to you uh, is that this show uh, that I have uh, been thinking for a long time, this is only to pass on certain information, inspiring the young generation, sir, who can you know take up uh, you know recording these beautiful butterflies, okay, and uh, the uh, conversation will be. uh more about uh, influencing these young minds sure. who can in the uh, coming days they can also become very good i know wonderful. photographers wonderful but then how were you interested not photographing tigers and lions and elephants and uh, uh, going very minutely looking for small small tiny insects okay Be frank, uh, my journey also started just like any other wildlife enthusiast by chasing tigers and elephants in most of the national parks in India. And then on one such trip, I met a couple who were more interested in birds. That got me very curious about uh, you know while everybody is looking at these animals, why is this couple looking at birds? So I got talking to them, and from there I came to know about an uh, organization called Bangalore Birds. uh bng birds for short once i reached back bangalore i uh, made an effort to contact uh, bng birds and uh, it was on one of their walks i met this wonderful person by the name kartikeyan srinivasan and uh, while the rest of the group was looking at these winged beauties the birds and everybody kartik was looking at something very small looking at the insects looking at the butterflies and that got me very curious uh, saying that you know why is this person behaving in such a different manner 
and uh, that was the trigger point uh, one is a behavioral requirement okay and the second is a equipment based requirement mm -hmm. so first one the behavior requirement is first of all the basic requirement is for you to understand the behavior of butterflies and for that you need to understand what kind of species exist in your local habitat in your local environment or whichever place you are going to what do you want, what what should you expect to see the second is you should have a keen eye for details third is you should have a lot of patience those are the behavioral traits required for being a good butterfly photographer you should know how the butterfly is going to behave what is going to do at a particular time in the day whether it's going to nectar on flowers whether it's going to bask in the sun whether it's going to mud puddle in the soil right the second part is the technical part that's where what kind of equipment you use comes into play so a good dslr along with a good macro lens is a good option to start with right uh, it doesn't have to be very expensive it can also be a point and shoot it can be one of those bridge cameras as well which is very uh, handy nowadays um, so a good equipment which can capture small details basically macro images is good to uh, good place to start with uh, but then uh, you see most of our people nowadays uh, is globally they are you know they use their mobile phones and right. you have mobile phones of uh, mega you know 100 oh, yes. uh, 8 megapixel and a lot of uh, things attached yes. to that mobile yes. phone yes. is a mobile phone compatible for people to take photographs of butterfly yes can they go that close to the butterfly because you may have a macro lens of a 90 mm macro lens and then you can uh, go as closer to the butterfly right uh, and it flies away but for a uh, mobile <laughs> it becomes much more uh, difficult going closer to the yes. uh, butterfly a mobile will never be able to compete with a dslr definitely but at the same time it's very good for taking uh, observation or record images right mm -hmm. um, you are absolutely right uh, the whole purpose or the whole focus or the objective of shooting butterflies is to document them document their patterns document various uh, events that are happening around the butterfly and for doing that you need to be at a comfortable distance from the butterfly not get too close so as to scare it away right so that's where the uh, uh, more uh, uh, complex equipment comes into play right? and the serious uh, kind the of serious involvement yes. in photography but for documentation purposes for record right. photography a phone is also equally good i know of many of my colleagues uh, who uh, do good butterfly photography with their mobile phones mm -hmm. but they obviously cannot compete with uh, the high end macro and dslr uh, one question that comes to my mind like a wildlife photographer who takes a photograph of a, of a tiger uh, you know in a something amazing kind of a situation has got a market value yes but do we have that same kind of a market value for butterfly that's a great question that's a great question dada now um, let me give you a small example you, you mentioned but tiger so tigers are seen in almost all parts of india whether it's extreme north extreme east northeast south west right there is one butterfly species which is found in only one place in the entire world not in the entire world it's called the lilac silver line okay okay there is only one location in bangalore on the outskirts of bangalore called the hasargata lake that is the only recorded location where the lilac silver line has been photographed from now you tell me which is more rare that one butterfly which is found in one place in the entire world or a tiger which can be seen in almost all parts of india undoubtedly it is that uh, butterfly in bangalore absolutely so, and, uh, so uh, that's where that's where uh, people like us uh, need to understand right wildlife is not just about size it's not just about big mammals it's not just about big creatures it's about everything that you can see the importance about wildlife is how can you as a enthusiast as a concerned person as a concerned citizen play a role in conservating this wildlife and conserving this wildlife exactly uh, photographing butterfly for 15 years what 
was a challenge for you and how did you overcome that okay so uh, again two parts to this question um the first part is um uh, is photographing the only part about conserving butterflies mm -hmm. i it i i i spent a lot of time on this uh in the initial days i used to photograph everything that i used to uh, see and uh, the aim was to document it the disadvantage of doing that was that my observation skills were getting reduced i was having to compromise on what i was observing and focusing more on photographing so that was one challenge and it took me a lot of time uh, to decide what to focus on so what i did was that whenever i was going to a new place i was focusing on photography when i was going to a known place i was focusing on my observations so i used to pack my camera away i used to focus only on documenting what i was seeing and photographing only if i was seeing something new or unique but coming to the technical challenges of photography there were several challenges i faced the first one like i mentioned i started off my photography journey with very basic equipment and i found it uh, not able to satisfy my uh my my requirement i was not able to get clarity i was not able to get good backgrounds i was not able to help people learn from these photographs it was only becoming more of a documentation butterflies if you spend some time on them as i mentioned earlier on also are different are, are very small creatures there are about uh, 160 species found in bangalore itself there is about 350 species found in Karnataka. There is about 1,500 species found in all of India. Each of these butterflies, most of these butterflies, uh, can be differentiated easily. But there are lots of butterflies which can be differentiated only when you get good photographs. So photographing is a very important part of butterfly uh, documentation. So having good equipment, having uh, uh, having good clear clear images. is an important uh, problem an important challenge that i faced earlier on and so uh, i over i learned from my seniors i learned from people who had gone on this road i learned that having a macro uh, lens would help me get better images i learned that having a more advanced dslr would help me to capture images in the right manner in which i was expecting them uh, to turn out uh, i later on also understood the importance of flash and stand the importance of having diffusers uh, many of my seniors uh, like ashoka laugh at me now <laughs> think that this guy has moved from being a no flash guy to a flash guy so all this is a part of the learning process so uh, you know those are the some of the challenges that i faced earlier on and that's how i overcame them so uh, uh, for the last 3 uh, 4 days i have been moving around with you and ashok and uh, i i was uh, you know sometimes uh, uh, wondering uh, what is a lifer uh, what is puddle so i would like my viewers to also understand those specific terms that the butterfly you know the photographers they use which would be really be very useful for you because this is though these are very technical terms but then these terms are really wonderful so can you just uh, elaborate on some of these sure, uh, right. beautiful things that you and and why you use this term that sure. that would be more beneficial i think for all of us sure that sure so so before i answer that uh, disclaimer i am not a scientist i am not a trained biologist uh, what i am sharing with you is uh, as a citizen scientist as a person who is uh, an enthusiast so life uh, is something that you are seeing for the first time ever right so when you see a new species of butterfly ever you call that a life um now there are several things that a butterfly does uh, during the course of the day right if you observe uh, it starts so butterflies are creatures are cold blooded creatures they need the sun's energy the sun's heat to recharge themselves to charge themselves and get up for the day so the first thing that they probably do most probably do is bask in the sun right so that activity is called basking you will find most butterflies if you go out say about 7:30 8 in the morning sitting out on flowers or leaves or plants or even on the ground just with their wings open or closed taking in the sun 
The second activity that they most that they most likely do is nectaring, which is basically taking nectar from flowers or in some cases from uh, nutrition from the ground or nutrition from other areas. The third activity uh, which you mentioned is called puddling or mud puddling. This is an activity where mostly it is mostly male butterflies of the species which sit on the ground usually on wet patches and take in nutrition. These are salts, these are various uh, important uh, nutrition elements which they take in from the ground which helps them to become more successful in terms of procreation which they pass on to the female of the species. Um, and um, another term which we probably did not use in the last 2-3 days is called migration. So you would have heard of large migration uh, of wildebeest in Africa, of elephants in India, you would have probably heard of migration of monarch butterflies in North America. Similarly, a large migration, a huge migration of butterflies happens in India, in southern part of India. Uh, this, is happen this happens from the Western Ghats to the Eastern Ghats and back from the Eastern Ghats to the Western Ghats. Right? Uh, the East Western Ghats to Eastern Ghats migration starts uh, just before the onset of monsoons or at the onset of monsoons and the Eastern Ghats to Western Ghats migration happens once the monsoons are over. Right? So, these are always some of the terms that are used during the butterfly journey. Yeah. And uh, life work. Uh, see, uh, is it that the butterfly found in northeast can also be found in rest of the in part of the India? Possibly. Possibly. So, so, so uh, what's, the, what's the connection? It's, so it's a huge uh, distance. You have butterflies in the extreme northeast in a place in Arunachal Pradesh and you have this a same kind of a butterfly in Kerala. So, uh, I, will, uh, I will request you to ask that question to a more serious scientist uh, or maybe a more trained uh, butterfly watcher like Ashokda. I uh, will give you a small example. Um, there is a butterfly called uh, banana skipper okay. or rounded red eye. Now, this was a butterfly which was found only in the northeast once mm -hmm. upon a time. And now it is found in the northeast as well as in south, south India. So, right? again, do this migration theory work in so this? So, this is not a migration. Okay. This is probably a, a, an accidental introduction of that butterfly into southern India. Now, this butterfly's host plant, this has got a very interesting uh, history behind it. This butterfly's host plant is the banana plant. Okay. It feeds on the banana. So, probably, probably, and this is just my guess. That some bananas went from the northeast okay. to South India. It contained the larva. It contained the lava, and then that's how the butterfly got introduced in South India. And since banana is also grown in South India, mm -hmm. it just. So how do you territorialize these butterflies? So as you say that this butterfly is from northeast, right. but now it is available. It's it also found in Kerala. Yes. How do you? Uh, so we cannot really territorialize them. This okay. is an evolving area, okay. right? So um, there are. With the information that we have today, we have categorized them as uh, uh, found locally, found everywhere in India, or found uh, in a particular spot within a particular city, right? But uh, it's like I said, it's an evolving study. So tomorrow, if the same butterfly species is discovered from somewhere else, that's a range extension that we can call it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then we can say that okay, it was earlier found in one particular geography, and now it's been expanded to another area. So, yeah. so uh, there is no fixed rule that a butterfly that has been seen only in one place cannot be seen anywhere else. Unless that is geographically cut off, like say for example the Andaman Nicobars. Mm -hmm. Now they are geographically cut off from mainland India. Mm. right? So a, a butterfly which is found only in Andaman and Nicobars will most probably be seen only there. Okay. But whereas a butterfly which is seen in other parts of India, you never know. Uh, my uh, question to you right now is, there are some unique butterflies that you must have captured. Yes. And there are some butterflies which are yet to be captured. Oh, there are many. <laughs> there are many. Which one you think that I must capture a photograph of that butterfly? Oh, that list is too long, Dada. <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, one that you have captured, which you think that it is 
that's the amazing shot that I ever had of a butterfly. There are so many. The recent one was in this last uh, trip that we made recently, right? Okay. There was a butterfly which came and sat on your camera. The comment okay. it, uh -huh. right? I think that that is one of the most amazing butterfly images that I have seen so far. They have okay. that are captured so far. So uh, it's it's something that you know that happens every day. It's not. I cannot say that this is the only one that I have seen or this is the most amazing one that I have seen. Every day is an experience, and mm -hmm. every day uh, I look forward to capturing more beautiful images. The list of butterflies that I have not seen is a very long one. Mm -hmm. There is one thousand five hundred butterfly species seen in India. I have probably seen about four hundred of them. Okay. So I've got eleven hundred more to see. So if I start naming them, then this show will. Take it up was it was really wonderful talking to you, uh, Rohit. And uh, you know, uh, I started this podcast thinking that we have people like Rohit coming here, and uh, in the coming episodes, we'll have much much more people who will be sharing their life experiences. Uh, thank you. It was so nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Welcome to Northeast once again. Absolutely. Look and keep on coming, and uh, I'll be very happy to host you, thank you for so our next sessions of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.